Hey YouTube, I just started another build and I thought I'd share this this build with you because it's a little bit of a departure from where I've been lately. Uh, I've been working on the Balsa Warbirds and the Pilatus and uh, the Tower Hobbies Sport 60 and the Millennium Master of course. And I've also been taking my Warbirds out lately and flying those a little bit. But uh, I've just kind of had this hankering for speed, something really fast. And I think it had to do with the Grim Reaper. That Grim Reaper is a pretty fast airplane, but it's a, uh, a wing. So its capabilities are limited in terms of what you can do to toss around. So anyway, I got to thinking about it and I waxed a little nostalgic and decided, I wonder what Flight Test has been up to. It's been a long time since I built one of their airplanes. And I came across this FT Racer. So I decided I'm going to give it a try. As you can see in front of me, I've already printed out the plans cut them, taped them to the foam board, and I've done some tape work. But I'm just gonna do a little preview on what's coming on this build. And then as I go through it, I'll stop and take a couple shots. I'm not gonna go through the entire build video. But here's what I have in mind for this guy. That's a Turnigy 2826, 2200 KV with a seven x six. I've got an APC clone. This is one of the Hobby King seven x six APC-like propellers that I'm gonna use on this build. I'm just gonna give that a try and see what happens. I've also got a Park 480, a 980 KV, but that needs a pretty big prop, so I'm not sure. I'm also, on this plane, I'll be adding some landing gear. Uh, I've got a runway, I may as well use it. I don't like the idea of traipsing around in the wet Florida grass for a foam airplane. So anyway, uh, that said, I wanted to show you a little bit about what I did in terms of taping. There's a wrinkle there, but I was getting sloppy in the areas where I knew I was gonna cut it out anyway. So what I, what I have here, and I think I've mentioned before, I like the red and white paint scheme in the sky because it's really easy to see. But what, what I've done here is I've taped the horizontal stabilizer. The, the, that section of, of this assembly is in red. And then the elevator, I don't know if the video will let you see it, but that is clear. So that's gonna be, that'll look white basically. But I, they did, there is clear tape there. And then I mirrored that on the other side. So in order to set that up, I just kind of cut the template with that leading edge flush and then put some marks on each end. And then I did the same thing on the other side. You know, I flipped it over and did the same thing. And then if you look at it from the end, you can see the red line is basically goes back equidistant from the leading edge. So that's how I taped that one to prepare that for assembly. And then I did the same thing with the vertical stabilizer gonna to be tough to get this one hand but you'll get the idea so the the rudder will be white and it's got clear tape and then the vertical stabilizer will be red and then same thing you know I just I, I mirrored that on the back side and I just kind of used the board and went like that and I even transferred my mark there on the bottom edge of the vertical stabilizer so I get the same starting point for the tape and I just put a couple rows of red tape down and some clear tape and now that guy's ready the fuselage is going to be predominantly white and I'll, pr I'll probably put some white stripes. I'm definitely going to do some red on the tail and the back, but I'll probably put some red, red stripes up here somewhere. And uh, I think I think what I'll do because my my empennage or tail feathers are all red is I'll put some I'll put some red along the back end and make the back tail red as well. So that'll be that part. And then the wings important thing about the wings when you when you're using a two-part color scheme like this so that's the plan laid down on lay down on on the wing panel that I've that I've taped up and you can see this is the the underside the belly side of the of the wing and this is the top of the airfoil so now when I cut this out the trick is um, after you cut it out you have to take the other wing plan and put it on this side of the air of the cardboard to make your cuts because you want the tape you don't want to cut into the tape that's going to be on the outside this is the side you want to make the cut so what i'll do is after the sections are cut out there's the other wing after these sections are cut out then i'll swap the templates and put them on put them on the other cardboard but on the in, inner part of the wing and then i'll make my red score cuts and my bends and folds and all that stuff so i'll show more about that when i get to it but there's there's the 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 foam board pretty much ready to be cut out and then those are really just like the auxiliary pieces the formers and the power pod and the spar i won't uh, tape those those will just be left alone so 
that's the the first part of this build. I'm gonna get to cutting and folding and gluing and I'll come back and take some more video as I progress along. All right, I've got all the elements for the FT racer cut out. Here are the wings. I haven't done the uh, score marks on the back or the bevel cut for the wing yet, so they still need to be done, but the wings are cut out. These are the wing spars, the power pod, the fuselage there. And again, I'll, I'm gonna, I think on the back for sure, because I'm using red tail surfaces, I'm gonna, I'm gonna s scallop some red in there and get some red tape going on the back there to kind of blend in with the, with the uh, empennage. And then I like the way this came out. Um, I, again, I haven't bevel cut this yet. I've only scored it to open it, but the uh, tape, the red and white tape separated right on the rudder line. It came out really nice. So here's the other side. And, and same thing, that, that red and white separation happens exactly on the hinge point. And then here's the horizontal stabilizer and the elevator. Same thing. It, it worked out perfectly. I mean, that cut is right on, right on between the two tape lines. And then there are the other little knickknacks for the build, but they're formers and, and uh, decorative pieces. So there we go. Now I'm gonna uh, start working on the wings. I have to cut the leading edge and, and get those formed up and get the spars in. And then uh, after that, it's, it's gonna move along pretty quick. I've done, I've done a lot of these builds and at this point in the game, now that everything's kind of taped and cut, uh, it'll go, the build will go really quick. So more to come. All right, guys, I wrapped up the build of the FT racer. I went ahead and used the eyeballs and the bubble canopy. That's tough to do. I got to tell you, it, it, uh, there's a lot of cuts, a lot of complex curves and to get it glued down and staying, it's just really tough to do it. You have to be very patient and very deliberate. But anyway, it, you know, one thing that kind of illuminated for me as I went through this build, it's been a long time since I built a foam plane and the skills kind of got away from me a little bit so no matter how hard i tried i couldn't quite get the fuselage perfectly square it's just a little off uh the wings are good the the tail section is good the rudder's good every so it's going to fly straight i have no concern about that at all and uh but you know just getting away from it for as long as i've been no matter how hard i tried i just couldn't seem to make everything exactly right but anyway you can see i've got a nice tape covering on the wings that's what that's what that shine is from same thing on the fuselage the the decking is poster board i'm not real thrilled with that because i'm in florida and the freaking humidity here is so high i'm not really sure how that's going to hold up you can see on the tail surfaces i got the uh, controls cut right on that line so i was really happy with the way that turned out i'll see if i can get the servo to move there we go so you can see that the surface moves right on the tape line which i think is very cool um I'm using that 2200 watt motor. I put a uh, <laughs> I put a, a three cell pack on that, and this is a 7.6 APC clone prop from Hobby King. And I'll put it this way: I've got a 30 amp ESC on three cell power, and I killed the run up at 38 amps, which came in. I think that's over 400 watts. I'll put it in the description. I'm pretty sure that's right there at 400 watts. So I ended up. Uh, putting a control in the radio to limit full power because uh, I like I said I shut it down at 38 amps and it was still going up so I expect this thing to really move out because it's such a small plane and super light so regarding the build I, I do remember this part and I did remember this part from from when I used to build and fly Mustangs quite a bit trying to get that power pod in there when you have a cardboard deck is a pain in the neck. Um, it's probably one of the, I mean, the flight test guys really pride themselves on this power pack concept and I get it. You know, it's pretty cool to be able to have your electronics in one pod and be able to move them from airframe to airframe. That is very cool. I, I do understand that, but it is just inconvenient. Uh, getting the skewer, skewer lined up right and, and getting the, uh, you know, that those tabs to sit down way, way back inside there and keeping your wires plugged in while you're shuffling stuff around. It's just, it's just annoying. Um, but anyway, I got it in, but the point of the, me going into that little section is if you do build a plane like this, do the poster board last. I, I don't know why in their videos that they do the poster board 
in the middle of the build or, or you know, toward the end of the build. But put the power pot in. You, you, you get access to this. There's a deck under here, and you get access to that while you're building. And you can get your hands in behind it, too, uh, from the back and lift up on the power pod. So uh, I recommend just putting the power pod in as soon as you get it constructed and the fuselage and wing are in. Uh, there's no reason not to put that power pack in. I mean, think about it in production. You, you know, once once the airplane's in this state, you're going to be happy to, in theory, happy to take that power pack pod or power pack in and out of the airplane. Why not go ahead and get it mounted and installed before you put all this cardboard on the top? Um, I probably I, the last time I messed around with this poster board like this was definitely. I think it was a Mustang. It might have been a, a crew, an FT Cruiser. I'm not sure, but I I, I just don't like it. it it's the air the airframes are really good. Th these wings are solid. They've got a nice airfoil shape to them. They've got under camber. You know they're they're good solid wings. I like them. But that poster board, it just kind of to me, it just detracts from the quality of the overall plane. Uh, I w I really wish there were a way they could just get away from using poster board. I mean, I knew, I know they do it for decorative purposes, but um, I just don't like it. And, and is, that's, that's the best I can do with it. And I'm, even though it looks okay, I'm still not thrilled with it. So let's see, I think as far as the build goes, uh, I had some basic problems with the plans up front, the lines, when I, when I put the plans together, I, I, I printed off the tile copy. I could not get the lines to completely line up exactly right and of course when that happens you're going to have some build issues fortunately i've encountered that kind of thing before and, and i was able to just work work my way through it so I, I expect the the airplane should fly fine anyway I'll, I'll get a flight video up as soon as i get it out um as it stands right now it's pulling 380 watts and it's just i i can't even tell you it's a pretty light plane i should probably weigh it but I expect with 380 watts and a 7.6 prop, this thing is going to haul the mail for sure. So anyway, take stand by on the channel for a flight review. I'll get that up as soon as I can. Oh, and notice I haven't put the landing gear on yet. I do want to put gear on this. I don't want to hand launch this um, because because it's it doesn't have a high mounted prop. The way you, you hand launch this is you kind of hold it back there on the turtle deck, you know, that way forward and you just kind of chuck it in the air. So I really don't want to do that at the field. I'd rather just put some wheels on it. I'll put the skinniest ones on it I can manage, um, but I, I definitely am going to put some wheels on there because I have a runway. I may as well use it. And again, Florida is always wet. So I, even though I taped it up really well, I still see this thing taking a beating if I, if I don't get some wheels and keep it off the grass. So anyway, that's the build review. Stay tuned for the flight review. I'll get something up as soon as I can. Take care.